How is it going guys and welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Yo, it's Herman here and we've all been in the position where we're in the beginning stages of learning a new skill and wonder why our stuff doesn't look as good as the people that we admire. This was especially because I didn't learn any VFX skills through school or a course. It was just by watching YouTube videos. The answer I told myself was that I lacked experience, which was true. But the value in experience is learning what works and what doesn't. So through the trial and error process, process I went through, I realized that learning from other people's mistakes can help me avoid encountering more of them myself. And that's what I'm doing today, sharing the mistakes I've made that you can avoid and shorten your time to your road to mastery. These are things that you can incorporate right away and save yourself the frustrations that I've been through. Now this first one was probably one of the most impactful rookie mistakes that I made when I started getting paid to do stuff. And it was by having my project file a mess. When I was editing for fun and didn't have much of a process, it seemed cool to keep things messy. Creativity is messy. But when I had a client to please and was asked to do waves of revision, I realized how painful it was to dig up certain files to make changes to. I'd have to remove them or replace them. And I didn't even remember what they were called because I didn't rename any of my files. Cause you know, when you download like a graphic or a video from the web and the name is just like a bunch of letters and numbers and it's just gibberish. So what I learned was to rename them to something a little more memorable and place them into folders that are named appropriately. So place all your graphics in a graphics folder and all your footage in a footage folder. Rename your layers so it's not just like adjustment layer 12 on your timeline because when I go back into my comp, I didn't know what the heck anything was. Now I know it'll probably feel like a chore at first, but I thank my past self for developing this habit early. Someone opened up my project file uh, in the past and it probably felt like opening up someone's messy room where like there's a sock on top of a pizza that's been sitting there for days. I don't wanna be that guy. So now I try my best to always keep my project files tidy. So when I first started getting into to motion graphics, I'd watch these amazing animation reels and wondered why the motion in their animation didn't look like my stiff keyframe movements. Like, do I just suck at keyframing? And then I learned what easy ease was in After Effects. Ever since then, I didn't feel like a peasant using my linear keyframes that would suddenly stop like a truck hitting a brick wall. Basically, easing your keyframes will give your motion a level of smoothness that feels more pleasant to the eye. So instead of it starting and stopping suddenly, your motion can gradually ramp up and then gradually slow down before it stops. In After Effects, I do this by easy easing the keyframes by highlighting them and then hitting F9 and then making adjustments with the speed graph editor by dragging the handles. It's one of the easiest ways to add a level of polish in your work. I don't know about you, but I have spent a lot of time rotoscoping just by masking frame by frame in After Effects. Honestly, I wouldn't even wish the pain of rotoscoping on my worst enemy. I've always looked for shortcuts to avoid it and there are amazing tools now like Rotobrush 2.0 that can do so much of the work for you. But there's there's always something that requires some roto work. And instead of hurling my mask around the composition left and right, I'd wonder why couldn't I just track the mask onto something? And then I learned what track mats are. Basically, you can create a solid and then track it onto the thing that you wanna mask with your favorite method and then draw your mask. That way, most of the bulk movement is taken care of and you just have to fine tune your mask. So just quickly walk through how I do it. Uh, I like to use Mocha AE to track my object and then export the data to a null object and then parent the solid solid to that null object. Then I'll draw a mask on the solid and then watch through the clip to make any fine adjustments to the mask by keyframing it. So instead of keyframing every frame, I can just have a couple here and there. Now you can use the solid as a matte layer. So you can isolate what you masked or apply an effect only to that masked area. Ever since I started doing this, I stopped growing white hair. I was able to sleep earlier. So it's not just good for VFX, it's good for your health. Something I had trouble learning at first was being able to basically blend the VFX I did to the scene. And even if I got the color and the lighting right, something always felt a little off. That's when I started looking at the things that I compose with a different eye. And it was a question I would always ask myself uh, every time I slapped something in. And it was, how would it affect the environment if it were really there? So for example, if I overlay a fire in the scene, wouldn't it brighten up the subject because of how close it is? Or if I placed an object on a surface, wouldn't it cast a shadow? So this is something that I still struggle with now, but it made the things I do look a little less like it was slapped together in Microsoft Paint. I think it's a good question that every beginner should ask themselves whenever they're trying to build a scene. So hopefully you're finding the things that I've been sharing useful so far. And I want to take a quick break to talk about a pack that I handcrafted for modern creators like you. And this is great for spicing up your edit. It's called Enter the Future. And it's a motion graphic asset pack that includes a variety of assets that you can use for your music videos, commercials, live streams, narrative films, you name it. It comes with an unlimited license so you can use it for as many projects as you like and a tutorial on how to use everything. So if you need transitions, 
animations, borders, or custom text animations to give your video a modern edge, I recommend checking it out. Picking up where we left off while we're talking about matching things in your scene, one thing that I didn't do in the beginning was add noise. I come from a film background, so my logic has always been, whoa, 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 don't we want to remove noise so that our footage doesn't look like it was shot on a potato? But I learned that when it comes to compositing with live footage, there's always noise in footage. So if I'm ever adding something that I'd like to blend into the scene, like a graphic on a poster board or like a fake LED screen, the trick that I've always found to make it not look like it was just slapped on digitally is by adding a bit of noise. Now, the last mistake that I want to share is one that I learned on my first motion graphic gig. It was some simple text animation on a solid background and just with it like a vignette. So it should have been the easiest money I've ever made, but I was foolish to think so with my lack of experience. See, the problem was that I had these ugly stripes where I would apply a vignette, and that's when I learned what color banding was. These are visible changes between the shades of a color. I also found that the same problem would apply when I wanted to put like a glow effect on things. And I found that the easiest way to fix this is by increasing the bit color depth of your project. So in After Effects, instead of having your project being in 8 BPC, you can change it to something higher like 16 BPC to give it a smoother gradient. Although banding is almost inevitable in some cases, like when things are getting compressed, but it's something that I always try to avoid so that my work doesn't look low quality. So there you guys have it. Six mistakes that I've made for you so that you won't have to suffer through them yourself. Now let me know in the comments which one that you found is the most useful or a mistake that you made that can help others. If you found this video helpful and you want to see more content like this on the Olufemi channel, then make sure that you hit the big red subscribe button and click the bell notification so you don't miss a thing. As I mentioned before, make sure to check out my pack called Enter the Future if you're looking for some sick motion graphic assets to give your video an upgrade. You just click the pop-up for a little more information about it or by using the link in the description below. If you want to stay in touch and see what I'm personally up to, my Instagram handle is at coffeelicker. Again, my name is Herman and I'll see you guys next time.